Hi there. I got a new toy. I mean tool. In case my wife asks, it's a tool, not a toy. I'm out here working for her, not playing. Anyway, I got an airbrush. I've been wanting one for a long time. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. I've spent about a half hour following a YouTube artist who shows techniques and what to do to get it working. I'm a long way from knowing what I'm doing. I've done about maybe a half hour and then I decided it's time to put it to use. Why waste time practicing and learning how to do something when you can just screw something up? <laughs> well, I don't think I screwed it up too badly, but it's a long way from good. This is what I call my butterfly bowl, obviously because I've put some butterflies on here. Now, it was a really rough piece of wood, but uh, I like it. I left a lot of the natural element on the back of it. Did the uh, airbrushing. I printed out on my inkjet printer some of these butterflies and then transferred them on here. And I'll show you how I did that. And I'm sure right away a lot of you are going to say there are better ways to do that. And I know that. But I did it this way simply because I had in my shop everything I needed to do it and I'm too lazy to go out finding other things. So if you want to look up on YouTube how to transfer images onto wood, feel free to do that. You'll find there are a lot of different ways. This is just what I used. So I hope you'll stick around, see how I came up with this, and let's get over to the lathe. Well, I have a piece of maple that's been sitting around my shop for years. I have no idea where I got it or when. It's got a bit of a strange shape to it. It's not round or even close to round. Uh, tapers from practically nothing to about two inches on this side. I used my smaller center finder to find the approximate center on both sides. Now I'm going to put it between centers. Try to put a recess or a tendon on this side shape it, and then work on what's going to be the inside of a bowl, a platter. I'm not sure what this is going to be. Hope you'll stick around and figure out what I'm doing with me. Let's go over to the lathe. As you can imagine, this is running very unbalanced. And I tried turning it at 500 RPM. It was very rough, but I increased it to 1000 and it actually calmed it down a little bit. So I'm going to be turning this at 1000 RPM. First thing I'm going to do is make a recess. I've marked this, I believe, as close as I can to one inch from the center. So I'll be using my parting tool just to create that recess. All right, I need it to be a little larger in diameter and a little deeper. It's not enough there. to actually take some of this off here because this is too deep for these jaws. So I'm going to take a little bit off of there just so I can get this to fit in that part there. All right, I believe if I take it off just to here, that should give me enough room for the jaws to fit in there. And I'm going to do a little bit of shaping from there out as well. All right, I believe that's gonna work just fine. I need to clean up this area right here. So I'm just gonna start bringing it out this way from there. Clean this up and start to shape this.
That's very, very rough. It's hard to, hard to turn this when you've got so much air to turn. I'm going to have to see if I can do some scraping to do a better job there. Before I do any scraping, I want to do some more shaping on this. And also, there's a very large knot right in the corner here. It's very, very dry wood. I don't know what to expect with this. It could come flying out of there. I'm hoping not. So I'll also want to true up this edge a little bit after I get some more shaping done. Starting to look like I could lose some of this knot. Only one way to find out. When I'm making this cut, because there's so much air time, I try to put most of my force down against the tool rest to alleviate the problem that it's wanting to make it bounce a lot. I'm going to try a little bit of shear scraping now, both on this edge if I can, and on this face. A little tricky to do it with all the air time that's involved. Alright, I've been shear scraping just on this half, leaving the back to see if I can see a difference, and I can. It is working. I think it's going to take a long time because I'm doing it very, very lightly. I'll just keep working on that. I'll be back when I finish this. Well, a little ways to go yet, but that is, that is cleaning this up, so I'll just keep at it. I'll be back when I finish this. And this on the edge, not cleaning up that nicely. I probably just started doing some very heavy duty sanding. When I'm shear scraping this, up on the upper part, I have the handle against my left hip to try to help control it because I want to be moving my whole body, not just my arms. When I move over to here, I switch it and put it against my right hip to control it. And that's not doing a bad job at all. I think I've done about as good as I can. Now it's going to be some sanding. And I am going to have to start with 80 or 100 grit. It is a little bit rough, but because of all the air time, I don't have much control over it. These parts, I'm going to leave them natural, just like they are. Do I dare call this a natural edge piece? We'll see. So I'll, I'll sand this by hand. I'm simply going to be locking it spindle and I'm going around like this and the same on these parts. It's going to take quite a while to get the finish I'm after and I'll be back. It's all sanded. I sanded it to 320. 
I think that'll be sufficient on this. Going to 400 might have killed me. <laughs> it's pretty tough sanding by hand on here. So now I'm going to reverse this. Put this chuck into the recess and I'll be back. All right, I'm going to bring the tail stock up with the live sander just to make sure this is not going to come off of there. I'll be turning at 1000 RPM again and it's balanced out much, much nicer. And I'm just going to true up this face. Oh, that's just nasty. This is very difficult to cut for some reason. So I'm going to use shear scraping to take care of this. Got a little bit more to take off first. Then I'm going to shear scrape it. You've seen that, and then I'll be back. I'm going to try sharpening one time and see if I can improve on that. The wood in this area feels just a little bit punky. Not really sure. But I put a fresh edge on here and let's see what kind of difference that might make. That is definitely an improvement. It's far from perfect, but I guess I'll be sanding some more. There's a surprise. Beautiful job up here, but it's just very tough in here for some reason. So I'll just trim this down, then I'm going to sand this, and I'll be back. much better but I do need to take more off because it's chipped out pretty badly in here. No, I am not going to get a clean cut. Time to get to the 80 grit. Before I start sanding this, I might as well turn a little bowl out of this. All right, now I'll sand all of this.
I've sanded it to 400 grit now, nice and smooth, and put on one coat of sanding sealer. Now I've printed up a couple sheets of butterflies like this. Cutting them out, I'm going to put some tracing paper behind here and just go over it with a pencil to get all of these lines transferred onto the wood. I've cut a piece of transfer paper, just slightly larger than the butterfly. I just want to tape down the edges. making sure I have the correct side of this transfer paper facing down. Then I'll put the butterfly on there, tape it to the transfer paper. Now I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm going to go over all of these lines doing my best to make sure that I don't forget any. And when they are all on there, I'm going to use my pyrography pen to burn them. The hardest part of this is due to the fact that I am very shaky. Now I'm sure you can see places where I've gone right off of the line, but that shouldn't matter. Nobody will know except you and me, and let's not tell anyone else, okay? Now what I want to do is just carefully lift this up, see if the lines are all there. And I believe they are. Well, I'm fairly happy with that. So now what I want to do is do a few more on here, then I'll be back to show you my next step. I've been using a 1.2 millimeter tip for my pyrography work, but I find that that's a little too large. These lines are very close together. So I ordered this one, which is a 0.4 millimeter, or 1 64th of an inch and it is very very tiny as you can probably see. Now the problem is that has not solved the fact that I am shaky. I've turned down the temperature a little lower than I usually use. I was advised to use a lower temperature and either a slower speed or simply go over more than once anything that I want to burn. So I'm going to see how this will work. One thing I'm sure of, this is going to take a long time. So I'll come back after I have a lot of this finished and see just what kind of job I've done on it. After I do the burning, I will go over everything with an eraser in case there is anything left on the surface from what I have transferred. But I'll leave that until I'm finished and I will be back. I'm fairly pleased with this. 
I am shaky, I admit it, and slowing it down did help a lot. Sometimes I find that the harder I try not to shake, the more I do shake. So I tried to do this relaxed. I'm pleased with how it came out. Certainly a long way from a professional or experienced pyrographer's job. But now I'm going to go on to the next step. What I'm going to use is known as frisket film, often just called frisket. And it's a transparent film, it has a backing on it, and when you remove that backing, there's a low tack to the frisket so it won't stick too badly and leave a lot of adhesive on your work. Well now if I just peel off that backing, you can see that it's very nice and transparent. And I'm just going to take the frisket and put it over this whole surface. Smooth it down. Trying not to have any bubbles in here. Now I just want to use this X-Acto knife to remove the frisket film wherever I want to have some color added. And I want to remove the areas where I want the darkest color And then when I put on the lighter colors, it should not interfere with the dark ones if they're dark enough. And I'm going to start with black, so that should be all right. Now I've taken the frisket off of all of this area, but it's still covering here. So I'm going to go around and remove it in the same manner from the areas that I want to have the dark color sprayed on, and then I'll be back to show you the next step. I haven't had much practice with this airbrush yet, so I'm still getting used to just how sensitive this trigger is. I get a lot more paint than I want, or a little less than I want. I'm using the X-Acto knife to help remove the frisket from the areas that I will next paint. And I'm going through here quickly since I did such a poor job of camera placement. Now with the painting complete I can remove the rest of the frisket. I'm going to be using Minwax Wipe On Poly. I'm going to have it turning at 100 RPM and of course I won't be able to do it right around the outside there. I'll have to stop it and put it on with it still. I want to at least get this bowl as much of the top surface as I can.
I think that's making those colors, the yellow and the orange, pop a little bit. side as I can. Now I'll set this aside for a few hours to dry. Well, that's how I came up with this. And to be honest, the airbrushing probably wasn't necessary. In fact, it may have been quicker just to use colored Sharpie markers. But it's something new to me. I'd like to learn how to use it, so I'm going to keep endeavoring to do so. I want to thank you for stopping in today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. Share it with others if you like. And don't forget to subscribe. I hope you'll stop in next time I'm around. In the meantime, have a good day in your shop and be safe. Take care now.